You're listening to episode number 92 of On Purpose with Alex Beaton. Guys, this year I got invited to be a speaker at Social Media Marketing World, which is the industry's largest conference. And this was just such a huge opportunity for me. I'm so pumped about it. It's happening from March 1st to the 3rd. 2020 in San Diego, California. So if you're going to be around, make sure you get a ticket and come support your girl. I'm going to be talking all about how to create unforgettable Instagram stories, even when you are busy. So this opportunity was actually given to me by the one and only Michael Stelzner, who is the founder of Social Media Examiner. You've probably seen their website. They've been around for a long time. I think they just celebrated their 10-year anniversary. He is the author of the books Launch and Writing White Papers, and he's the man behind Social Media Marketing World, which is the conference that I'm going to be speaking at. He's also the host of the Social Media Marketing Podcast, which I was also featured on recently. I know I got a lot of new listeners from that. So if you found me through that podcast, definitely let me know. And he is the founder of the Social Media Marketing Society. So this episode 92 is so freaking good because Mike really lays out what matters most if you want to be the undisputed industry leader in your space. And it comes down to one thing. And this is one thing that y'all know I am all about and something that I really promote. And that one thing is creating content. So not only is this a cool episode because of the gems he shares in regards to building your online presence, but this is such a cool episode because you're actually going to hear him give me a dose of coaching as I start to question whether after a year and a half of having this podcast on purpose with Alex Beaton, I start to wonder if it's time to press pause on the show to maybe do a little bit of reflection and, you know, just think about the future of the show and the future of the business and all that jazz. And in this episode, you hear him talk me through it and it really is magical. So enjoy this episode. Let me know what you think. This is On Purpose, episode 92. Do you ever feel like you're trying to balance it all? Nourishing your health while growing your business and living a life well-lived? And no matter how hard you try, sometimes you slip from purpose-driven into autopilot. Take a deep breath, relax, and let's get you back to where you belong, On Purpose. Michael, welcome to On Purpose with Alex Beaton. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for joining us today. I am super stoked to be on your show. Yay. So the first question that I ask everyone is, what is the most nourishing part of having your own business? Ooh, nourishing, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's I think seeing others achieve success as a result of something that you know I've done or accomplished mm-hmm. is very rewarding to me personally. Mm -hmm. So you like to see the impact that you're having on all of your customers and clients. Yeah. Hearing the story of the person who, you know, their business was changed or their trajectory was changed as a result of some piece of content we produced or some, you know, experience that they had with us is very, very um, exciting because we don't hear it a lot because we're an online business. So I think you're quite different from the people that I normally have on the show, from the entrepreneurs that I've had in that you have a pretty massive business where you have multiple people working for you. I know this because I've been lucky enough to work with you in various different capacities. I've been on your podcast and I'm going to be speaking at Social Media Marketing World in 2020, which I'm very excited about in San Diego. And obviously, like you have a big team. So I would love for you to share with us, just to give a little bit of context to people, um, just tell us about your business and, and a little bit about what you do and about the size of your team and kind of how your business runs. Yeah, uh, we have, um, we're 10, we just turned 10 years just recently. And when hey. I started, it was just me. Thank you. Uh, and eventually I started scaling up the number of employees. Uh, currently, we have 20 full time employees and another 39 contractors. So there's almost 60 people that run the company that is Social Media Examiner. I like to describe us as a a product-based media company, meaning we are the exclusive sponsors of all the content that we produce. So we have two podcasts, we have uh, our blog, we have our YouTube channel, and we're producing content for millions and millions of people. And then uh, the products we have, the biggest product is, you already mentioned, Social Media Marketing World, which is our physical convention. 
and we have um, last year we had almost 5,000 people physically attend and thousands more virtually experience it. And then we also have about four other products. Uh, one of them is our professional organization called the Social Media Marketing Society, which is a monthly membership organization. And then we also do online training in live summits. So this last year, we did one on Facebook ads, one on video marketing, and another one on Google Analytics for marketers. So the topic that... So, okay, everyone listening, Mike, basically, he's super organized and prepared. And when we invited him on the show, he was like, yes. And then he was like, these are some of the topics that I could speak about, which I loved. I thought it was so organized. And I was like... This is the one that excites me the most is how to be the undisputed industry leader in any space. So I would love to hear you talk about why you decided to choose that and what your journey, what your personal journey has been with becoming the undisputed industry leader in your space. Yeah. So first, let's talk about the benefits. Um, If you are the king or queen or your business is the, the one that everyone thinks of in your space, there's a lot of advantages that come with that. First of all, you don't have to pay Facebook or Google for advertising because you get people to advertise for you because those people evangelize you and your content and they tell everyone about you and you do not need to waste any money going out there and spending anything uh, with Big Daddy Google or Big Daddy Facebook, which is a huge advantage for a lot of small businesses. In addition, depending on what kind of business you're in, and by the way, my old business before this, I was a writer. So I provided a service to other people. Uh, people will line up to want to work with you. Uh, There'll be a waiting list of people who would love to have you um, service them. And when that happens, there's a lot of things you can accomplish. You can increase your rates. Um, You can train other people to do the work that you do so you can grow the business that way. So those are just a couple of of big benefits that come with this. And then, of course, the last one is, I think, kind of the hardest thing in the world for businesses is getting out there and being known. When you can achieve a certain level of notoriety, fame, um, I don't know what the right word is in your space, it's just, it makes it a lot easier to do the grind that we call entrepreneurship. Yeah, for sure. It's like you've built this reputation and your reputation speaks for itself and you have brand value where people know about you already. They already trust you. There's, There's a reputation that you've built that people are willing to pay more for they're willing to speak about you, spread the word for you, everything that you just mentioned, which is like next level. So talk to us about if someone's listening to this and they're like, yes, I love this. I want to be the undisputed industry leader in my space. What What do they need to have in place in order to make this a reality? First of all, you have to know that you will not be the king or queen unless you're willing to do the work. And um, if you're listening right now and you say, I want that, and you think that once you achieve it, you will have it forever, don't kid yourself. Once you get there, you're going to have to work very hard to become the king of the mountain. And then you're going to have to work doubly hard to maintain that position. So I just want to kind of start out with a little bit of you got to be willing to do the work. Um, Those that you think of, anyone right now, think of the niche that you're in and ask yourself, who is the person? Or who is the company that is the one that everybody talks about? And then ask yourself, what have they done to get there? And then what do they do to continue to kind of maintain that mantle? It's not simple, but I'll tell you the path. The path, Alex, is content. That is the key. If you think of any industry, any industry, and you think of the people that are always getting opportunities to speak up on stage, the ones that are maybe on television or radio, the ones that are always guests on podcasts, the ones that everybody's writing about in their blog posts, there is some message, some form of content that comes from that person that is unique. And as a result, that's what makes them stand out. So in my mind, Alex, there's really three ways you can go about doing this. There's the old-fashioned way, which is how we got started, which is the written word which is blogging. Mm-hmm. Then, there's the, then, then there's the moderately old-fashioned, new, sexy way, which is podcasting. Uh, podcasting has been around for a while, but it's just now kind of really gaining some legs, as you know, right? Because I've been doing it for seven years. My guess is, what are you, one and a half years or two yeah, years? Yeah, one and a half years. Yeah. So you're beginning to kind of see the advantages to podcasting. And then the last one, which you know really well, is video. 
Now I'm curious, which of those do you think is the most powerful and why? I would say video to me is the most powerful. However, the one thing that I like about audio that I'm now starting to learn as a podcaster myself is that people can multitask while they are listening to you. And there's like this intimacy. So while I think that video is super awesome because they're seeing you and and there's like little things about watching someone and the way they speak and their mannerisms that's just like magical and makes you connect with them. There's also something that's really special about audio because like a podcast is long. Like you're listening to like whoever's listening to this right now, like you're committed to at least 45 minutes of this episode that you're listening to while you're driving or you're doing your dishes or whatever it is that you're doing. Whereas right. video, you don't really have that. Yeah. So why don't we talk about, if you're willing, the pros and cons of each one. You want to go there? Let's go there. Okay. First of all, you have to ask yourself, what are you most skilled at, right? Can you write? Can you talk? Or can you be on camera, right? Because they're all different, right? Mm -hmm. There are people that are amazing writers. Uh, I used to be a writer, still am, but not as much as I used to be. And there's people that are amazing talkers. And then there's people that can be on camera. Now, the good, the big upside to writing is that it is highly scalable. What I mean by that is a lot of people use Google to search for content. Mm -hmm. And if you write something that uh, Google loves, then you can have that article be seen by tens, hundreds, millions of people, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And it can last literally, literally for years. And uh, the downside to the written word is that it is not all going to work for you. And it is a lot of work to actually create the written word. And the reality with writing is that not a lot of people spend a lot of time reading anymore, right? So they might skim your article, but they're not going to spend as much time as they are listening to us, which is transitioning to the next thing, which is podcasting. Um, well, and the last thing on writing is like, now that we're a very mobile society, mm -hmm. people don't read as much on their phone as they do on a bigger monitor, like a laptop or a desktop. They might skim very rapidly. And with, you know, this mobile society where everybody's doing business on their phones, it might be a harder medium for you to succeed with because that screen is so small inside of their hands. But you know, we started with writing. We still publish original content um, pretty much five, six days a week. Uh, the audio side of it, you kind of hinted to it. What's amazing about audio when produced well is that people will binge listen to it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like articles where they will necessarily binge read. With articles, people will just go back to Google and read the next thing on the Google list. But with a podcast, once they subscribe to Alex's podcast, and they love an episode, they're going to go back and they're going to listen to some of the other episodes that Alex has done. And what's cool is that they can, this is the one medium that they can listen to when they don't have any internet connection. So they can listen to this on an airplane. They can listen to this in the subway. They can listen to this when, you know, they're almost anywhere. I've asked people that listen to my show, where are you? <laughs> and I've asked them to take pictures and you'd be shocked. I've had people in bathtubs. I've had people in canoes. I had someone on a, on a pony. I had someone on the front of a military aircraft carrier. I mean, it's just, it's crazy where people are actually listening to podcasts. You mentioned it already, like the gym or um, doing the dishes. This is an opportunity to be very intimate with someone when they're doing something that's very boring. And the downside to podcasting, which you probably have realized, Alex, is it's not, you're not going to hear from as many people. Yeah. It's a passive medium, right? So it's really hard to get someone who listens to the podcast to click on a link or to leave you a comment because they're probably doing something else while they're listening to you. They might be with both hands on the wheel. So it's just not quite as easy of a medium. But if they're going to spend just a couple minutes on an article, they might spend a half an hour with you every single day or every week. And that's where the podcasting can really be the champion because you know this, Alex. People do business with those whom they know, like, and what's the last word? Trust. <laughs> That's right. And they get to trust you and they get to know you and like you when they begin to listen to you and the way mm. you talk, the things that you do, the questions that you ask. That is a magical thing that really works well in audio. So then the last one is video. Now, this is the scariest for most people to create because... Uh, the idea of turning a camera on yourself is not easy for a lot of people. Even though, as Alex, you can declare 
you know this. I mean, even doing Instagram stories, which is the easiest content in the world to create, people are scared, aren't they? To just yeah. turn on the camera and hit record. Why do you think that is? Because they're afraid of what people will think. They're afraid of being judged. They're afraid of putting themselves out there. There's a million right. reasons. <laughs> but let's take YouTube as an example. I've been for years going to all these YouTube conferences like VidSummit and VidCon. And I got to tell you, the level of loyal fanaticism for people that are regularly producing YouTube content is completely yeah. charts. It's at an entirely different level than podcasting and blogging. And back in the day, 10 years ago, when I started Social Media Examiner and I would go to conferences, people would say, I love, I love reading your blog. Then when I came out with the podcast seven years ago, people would say, I absolutely love your podcast. Like the level of fandom was like 10x. Then when I started doing video, it was even at a higher level, which is kind of crazy. So the problem with doing video, as you know, outside of Instagram stories is it's very costly. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to create. You often need editors and uh, lighting and special equipment. But those are kind of the three different mediums in which you can create content and you don't have to master them all. You just have to start with one and create great content consistently. I like what you said. You don't have to master them all. <laughs> and I want everyone to really let that sink in because I think it's so easy to get overwhelmed by all of the different options that there are and to think, oh, well, I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do this. But I think like you said, just choosing one, mastering one and deciding, okay, this is the avenue that I'm going to take. This is how I'm going to connect with my people and add value. I think that's key. I also love how you spoke about the level of fandom. That's really, really interesting. <laughs> it's like a scale. I never really thought of the, how the different um, formats of creating different types of content have different levels of fandom, but you're a hundred percent true. You're a hundred percent right. Um, so what has been your personal favorite of the three? Like you've done all three now. I know you're, you guys are focusing heavy on video now. Um, do you have a favorite? Podcasting is my favorite personally because I love talking and it's easy. And I don't, I'm not the center of my podcast. Instead, I bring awesome guests on like Alex Beaton and I just mm -hmm. extract knowledge from their minds and people love it. Yeah. So, okay. Someone's listening to this and they're like, cool. I've decided I'm going to go with podcasting because to be honest with you, I think podcasting is just, like you said, it's the easiest one, at least, especially for women, like not having to put on makeup and do my hair and all that jazz. Like You've got the least competition too. Let's be clear. There's a lot more YouTubers out there than there are podcasters. And there's a lot more bloggers out there than podcasters. Yeah. And, po and what's interesting is podcasting is now starting to pick up and it's still the lowest level of competition, which is interesting. So, okay. Someone's decided okay, I've decided I like to talk and I'm going to go with the podcasting. How do they know what type of content they should be creating? So this is important. Whether you go with blogging, podcasting, or YouTube, you need to create really, really good content that other people say is good because no one's going to say their, baby, their own baby is ugly. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> and the reality is that it takes work to create great content. So if we take podcasting, the first thing that I would do is I would look at all the industry people that are doing it well. I would ask you, Alex, did you do something like this before you decided to start a podcast? I did. Well, I did and I didn't. So I actually didn't really look too deeply into what the people in my space were doing because I'm a big believer of, I don't know. I, I Not like comparing yourself. I, I like to like keep my options very, very open. And I, I personally find that when I look at what someone else is doing, it's kind of in my brain now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I like to explore other industries. So I really dove deep into like random niches of podcasts that really I would never normally listen to and try to figure out what has made this person successful in this space, what has made this person successful in this space, spaces that had nothing it. to even do with businesses. And that was really what inspired me for the show. What Alex is saying is so, so important. And this is what I strongly advise. First of all, I do advise you take a look at the landscape of your competitors just to understand what you're up against because mm -hmm. you want to be in an ideal world as good or better than those people when it comes to your content, because as you enter into a competitive space and there's 
it's a very competitive space in podcasting. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's been around for at least 15 years. So there are a lot of podcasts. So at the very, at the very least, you want to understand like, you know, most podcasts suck, for example, in, I'm just going to say it, a lot of marketing podcasts are not very good. Okay. No offense to all my marketing friends who are listening, but most of them aren't. And uh, I did exactly what Alex did in the beginning is I listened to other people's content, regardless of the industry that I was in, to try to find the standard that I wanted to meet. And I was looking for inspiration, as I'm sure you were, right? And the idea is like, you want some sort of person to say, I love, you want to say to yourself, I love what person X is doing. I want to model that, but I want to do it for my industry. And person X might be doing a solo episode where every week they come on, kind of like what Amy Porterfield has been doing lately. Mm -hmm. And they just share their tips and techniques and secrets. Or maybe person Y is doing an interview show where you as the host don't have to do all the talking, which is very liberating for a lot of people. I don't like doing all the talking. As a matter of fact, I rarely do a solo episode on my own show because I'm far more of a extrovert and I love interacting with other people. And that just kind of brings out the best in me. So once you've kind of figured out all right, I think I know what I want. I think I know what the format is going to be. Then the next step is going gonna, is gonna to be to ask yourself, like, who am I trying to reach? Did you ask yourself that, Alex, when you started this podcast? A hundred percent. I was like trying to really get clear on the exact person who would be listening to this. However, having said that, now that I'm a year and a half in, I'm starting to even wonder if I could go even a level deeper and niche down even more. Because I think that's something I think right now, if I'm being 100% honest, I think, remember how just now you asked me, who's your person? I was like, well, we have all types of businesses. I right. think it would be even more powerful for me to niche down even one step further. In the beginning of my show, I say it's for marketers and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So I clearly say who it's for. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, it's mostly for marketers because even entrepreneurs classify their brain in their brain as a marketer. And I know, I know who it's really for. And I don't ever tell my audience who it is because I don't want them to feel like it's not for them. Mm -hmm. But I know it's not necessarily for nonprofits because I'm always talking about for-profit stuff. And when everybody, anybody reaches out, I say, well, you know what? There are other shows that specialize in that. Maybe I'm not for you. Mm -hmm. And the more niche you can get, the better. And that's really the key, right? So you can take a look at who, what your competition is talking about and you can try to find those holes. Maybe no one in your industry is talking about, let's just take, let's just assume you're a marketing podcast. Mm -hmm. Maybe nobody in the industry is exclusively dedicated to marketing with LinkedIn. Let's mm -hmm. just say you're a LinkedIn expert. So maybe you could differentiate yourself by having the LinkedIn marketing podcast. Now I know those already exist, but let's just say hypothetically for you, it doesn't exist. Or maybe it's LinkedIn for moms, you know, and you get really niche, right? And it's all about that. That's going to be the key, knowing who that person is. And not just knowing like what their role is, but also maybe knowing what they care about. So if it was LinkedIn for moms, you know, think about what could that mean? Like, why would moms give a hoot about LinkedIn? It's probably because they're looking for some side opportunities, right? Maybe there's, maybe it's LinkedIn for stay at home moms. If we want to get even niche here, right? Mm -hmm. How in the world do you do a LinkedIn show for stay at home moms? Okay. Well, that gets really fascinating. Then you just have to start talking to some stay-at-home moms and ask them, like, you know, do you have a side hustle? Do you want to have a side hustle? And maybe it's all about how moms who are into entrepreneurship but also into being a mom could, you know, achieve both. And now you're getting super niche, right? I bet mm -hmm. you there's no podcast that does anything like that at all. And the more niche you can get, the better. Here's the good news. You can always change the title of your podcast. You can always change the subject of your podcast, but you don't want to just go out and start a brand new podcast. So this podcast is called On Purpose. Is that right? Yep. So tomorrow it might be With Purpose. <laughs> True. <laughs> right? <laughs> you never know. And it doesn't matter because that's the good news about podcasting is all those back episodes remain forever. Yeah. I don't know. Is this interesting or helpful? Yeah, it's super helpful. Quick break in the show to highlight one of my favorite reviews. Thank you so much, Latigen from the United States of America, who said, I've been binging on Alex's podcast and just trying to take in all the extremely useful information she consistently provides. But today, listening to episode 87 slapped me in the face. Alex said, 
You know what you need to do to make your business successful. And I totally do. But listening to those words brought tears to my eyes. I have literally been holding myself back without even thinking about it. I'm in total awe of Alex and how connected she is with her audience and their pain points. Alex, you are truly incredible. Thank you. You're so welcome, Ladichin. Thank you so much for taking the time to actually leave a review. And to everyone else who has left a review, it is one of the only forms of feedback I get from you that lets me know whether you're actually enjoying the show or not. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't left a review yet, definitely go and make it happen. Okay, now let's get back to the show. It's so funny because I was just on a team call with my team. And we were talking about the podcast and the purpose of the podcast and like what we're doing with the podcast. And I like, we're leaning towards taking a break, like, especially over that December period to really just like recalibrate where we're at with the podcast and just reflect, like we're almost at a hundred episodes and so much has changed since we first started the podcast, just to like, stop, look back, take a break, think about, okay, now we've done this for a hundred episodes. How do we raise the bar? And that's important too, for everyone listening. Like your content is always going to be evolving. It's not something that like has to be perfect. If it doesn't, you will get crushed. Let's just be crystal clear. Exactly. You have to evolve. You have to evolve. And it it has to be something that's, that you're always trying to raise the bar and be better and provide more and give more value to your people. Because otherwise, like it's so easy to just get kind of stuck in a rut. And this is what I see so many business owners do. They're just trying to take a box off their list. They're, They're just trying to say, well, yep, I have a podcast and I have a new episode coming out every week, but they're not actually pushing themselves to be excellent and to be, like you said, like the industry leader. So yeah. It's, Can I ask you this question? Yeah, go Why ahead. Why are you deciding to take a pause? Because I want the space to stop and really just evaluate and just reflect on the entire show. I feel like right now, because we're constantly creating new content and I'm promoting it every week there doesn't seem to be that nice space to, to reflect. Is it because of some data that you received that made you ask yourself whether or not you should reflect? Like, Honest. for example, is, is the listenership not growing as fast as you would like or you're not getting feedback from them? No, the I think I think actually it's been really good. I think our listener, like we're getting more and more. It seems to be growing, which is good if you like look at how many listens we're getting and reviews are epic, which is awesome. Or at least for me, I think they're they're pretty good. But I I just feel like it would be really nice to stop after the hundredth episode and reflect and be like, okay, how do we raise the bar? Also, I, I feel like the name needs to be refreshed because another on purpose with Jay Shetty just came out and he's like a million times more visible than I am. And so I really want to have like the number one name in my, of my podcast. Like when you search for me, I want to be the first one. So you could just call it the Alex Beaton show. There's not going to be another one of those. Yeah. I, that's what we're leaning towards. <laughs> I know a lot of people that have done that. <laughs> yeah. It, it feels like the smartest thing to go with. But here's the thing, like people aren't going to necessarily search for that. So you have to think that this through. Is true. Here's what I would suggest. I would suggest you actually have a very authentic conversation with yourself and you broadcast it to your podcast audience Mm -hmm. and you reflect publicly. And what I mean by that is you say, hey, everybody, this is the 100th episode or this is episode 101. Um, I want to let you know what I'm honestly thinking and I want to know what you think and let everybody know what you're noodling on and what your actual thoughts are and tell them they have an opportunity to help you figure out the course of the future of this podcast. Mm -hmm. And as you move forward and anyone who's listening, you do not have to wait until Alex did to do what Alex is proposing to do. Like, don't say I'm not going to reflect on what I've done until I hit episode 100 because that's almost two years in. Yeah. Instead say, I need constant checkpoints. You know, how do I know this is working? Come up with a goal. Look at your analytics log into podcast, uh, in, into the Apple podcast and Spotify podcast data to kind of look at what episodes people are listening to the longest and really just ask yourself, you know, why am I doing this? And if you're just doing it because someone else told you to do it, like Mike Stelzner and Alex <laughs> Beaton, that's not a good enough reason. You've got to do it for some other reason. And can I give you a couple of reasons why you might want to consider doing it? Please do. You want to do this because this is going to help make you a better speaker. The more you talk, 
in behind a microphone, even if it's to yourself, the more you're able to get your idea formulated in such a way that you could be a guest on other people's shows. The more you talk behind a microphone, the more you have opportunity to talk on other people's stages at events. And the more that you refine your idea through spoken word, then what can come from that is written word opportunities. You could take those podcasts, transcribe them, and produce books. You begin to really get very, very good at your craft because the more you talk about it, the more people ask you questions and the more you refine it and the smarter and better you get at talking about whatever the topic is that you choose to talk about. And of course, I think the biggest opportunity is for you to change other people. Because here's the honest reality with podcasting. This is one of the few mediums where people are going to show up every single week from all over the world to hear from you. And let me ask you this question, Alex. You live in Trinidad. That's, mm-hmm. I can say that publicly, right? Or no? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What if you could get 30 people to come to your local hotel or resort every single week and listen to you? Would that be valuable to you? That would be valuable. What if you could get 100 to come every week and listen to you? That would be even better. What if it was 1,000? I'd be pumped. With podcasting, that's, that's easy. Yeah. It's really easy. And what a lot of us forget is that these are actual human beings that are listening to us every week. But all we see is the number. And we just assume, oh, it's only 50 or it's only 100 or it's only 1,000 mm-hmm. or it's only 10,000. But what we don't realize is that these are people that are showing up every single week and listening to every single word that you have to say. And you don't realize the kind of impact it has on people because they're not telling you. Everyone reach out to Alex and let her know how this show has impacted you. What's the best way they can reach you, Alex? Over on Instagram, at Alex Beaton. Perfect. All right, back to you, Alex. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh, okay. So what if someone's listening to this and they're like, Mike, I'm digging it. I love this suggestion. I'm starting my podcast, but I'm a little bit concerned because I am the only person in my business. I'm a solopreneur. And I just don't know that I'm going to have the time and how I don't even think that my clients would actually listen to this. And I'm already so busy with my clients. Like, is this something that I really want to add to my plate? Well, I would ask this question. Do you currently pay advertising to anyone to grow your business? I can answer for most of my listeners that it's a no. Okay. So the next question is, how do you get your clients? Well, that's just so different from everyone, for everyone. Probably word of mouth. Is what yeah. a lot of them do. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to tell you. This is where most entrepreneurs go out of business. They don't allocate a portion of their time to marketing. And there is marketing that you can do. I just read, actually, Christopher Penn just posted something on social about the average lifespan of a Facebook post. Do you know how long it is? No. Five hours. <laughs> and on Instagram, I think it's 24 hours. Okay. So think about it from this perspective. I think most people are going to know they're going to be on Facebook or Instagram. If you know that the social posts that you put on those platforms are going to last between five and 24 hours, what does that tell you? If you're not posting every day, you are invisible Mm -hmm. to your community. On top of that, there are algorithms that are going to repress your content if they do not think it is valuable. So the honest truth is that you're probably already, is it safe to assume a lot of them are doing social? Yep. You're doing social but you don't realize how little it's actually doing for you. Mm -hmm. So if you knew that you were creating content every day that had a lifespan of only 24 hours, what if you could create something that has a lifespan of years? Mm -hmm. Because think about the effort that it takes every single day to create Instagram and Facebook posts. Add it all up. How many hours is that? That's, That's at least, just guess, Alex, how many hours a week do you think you spend creating all that content? Oh my gosh, like at least... I want to say 10, two, five. Yeah. I would say like 15. Okay. So you're spending 15 hours a week creating content and guess how long it takes. However, that's me. Probably for people listening, it's way less. All right. Let's just say it's five. Yeah. Okay. Let's say it's an hour a day Uh, or let's just say it's three. Let's say Mm -hmm. two hours a week. Okay. (laughs) That is uh, eight hours a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, How long does it take you to do this podcast? Um, maybe five hours. And why is it five hours per episode? 
yeah. because yeah. well, and it's not just me, it's also my team. So I'm thinking about the fact that I have to think about what I'm going to say, then I have to record it. Then I have to send it off to be edited. I'm guessing that the person who's editing it is probably taking like an hour to edit it because they have to listen through to the whole thing. And then Laura has to listen to it again for quality control. And then we put together an email to send it out probably like four to five hours. What if you didn't care so much about quality? How long do you think it would take? Oh, well, then it would take way less. It, it could literally just be, I recorded it and I uploaded it. And how long would that take? 45 minutes to an hour? Yeah, an hour. So how long does the podcast last for? Do you think it has a shelf life longer than 24 hours? A hundred percent. What do you think? I mean, like you, you've gone into your analytics. How long? Years. Years. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. So people are going back all the way to the beginning of your podcast from a year and a half ago. Like literally this yes. month, we're going back to the beginning. Correct. So marketers, are you beginning to understand what we're talking about here? We're talking about a medium that could last potentially forever versus something that's going to last for five to 24 hours. Mm -hmm. if, you're spending, if you're spending two hours a week, eight hours a month creating something that's never going to be valuable beyond the first 24 hours versus spending that exact same amount of time, because you could, as Alex said, do it in less than two hours and upload it to the podcasting platforms and it would last for weeks or months, that's very valuable. And let's be clear, how long are they seeing your post when you post on Facebook or Instagram? How many seconds do you think they really see your post for? Not long. <laughs> Give me a range. It depends. If they're looking at a Facebook post, they're probably seeing it for like three seconds. I mean, most people probably are not even reading what you're putting out. Okay. So let's say it's three to 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So you are working this many hours to have content that's seen for three to 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. What kind of an impact do you think you can make in three to 15 seconds? Not as much as you could make in 45 minutes of a podcast. That's right. So if someone would spend a half an hour or more listening to you every week mm -hmm. versus a couple of seconds, you see the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of those kind of things where you have to ask yourself, can you afford not to create content that has a longer shelf life? Mm -hmm. Can you really afford not to? And as well with podcasts, this I know that everyone looks at it and they, they feel like they're behind because they see so many other people with podcasts, but this is really just the beginning. And the sooner that you get started with something like this, the, the more value that you have waiting for people to find you. And, and like you said, binge watch you. Like I have people message me multiple times a week and be like, oh my God, I just found your podcast and I've been binging you nonstop. And it's like Netflix. I get tweets and Instagram DMs every day. Yeah. Every day. And I get people that are on my show that have been on my show like a year ago, still hearing from people that, you know, like, like I don't know, Alex, how long ago you were on my show, but my guess is you've been hearing from people from, for, for a while, right? Yep, I have. So you, this is the key. The shelf life of this is huge. And if you are an entrepreneur, here's the good news. You don't have to spend a lot of time. I spend about a half an hour having a pre-call with Alex before I brought her on my show. And then we spend about 45 minutes together and that's it. The mm -hmm. rest of it, I sent off to a company. Mm -hmm. I work with a company called Music Radio Creative. They handle everything. They handle the jingles. They handle the sewing together of the audio. And then they send me back the final thing and we just schedule it. And mm -hmm. it's that simple. Um, and you know, my show has a lot of people that listen. I get about uh, 300 to 400,000 downloads a month on my podcast. But that's, you know, that average is about 50,000 people listening every single week. And then they go back into the back catalogs. For me, it's priceless. Yeah. I can only tell you what it's like because I've been there. And Alex can only tell you what it's like because she's been there. But here's the deal. Most people like us hope our competitors are thinking what you're thinking. I don't have time for that. <laughs> but here's what, I, here's what I'm here to tell you. If you can reframe this and say, what's the possible return on an investment like this? How could this help my business? At the very least, why not become a guest on other people's shows? Why not have someone reach out and pitch you to be on other people's shows and begin to see what could happen by just sharing your insight with a podcasting audience? It could be pretty massive. That's so true. That's actually a really good way to get started. <laughs> and also just so everyone knows and can be inspired, when I started this podcast, I just started recording episodes with guests and I didn't even immediately post them. Like I just wanted to like get my feet wet and I wanted to practice before I put it out there to the world. So if you're someone who likes to take things slow, you can take it slow and like 
I think it took me four months before I felt like, okay, I've got a good backlog. I'm now going to start posting weekly. You can do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable. And it's just so beneficial. Like for anyone who's listening, and I, I know there are people listening who aren't even on social media. I know there are some of you guys who are not even on Instagram or Facebook or active on those platforms at all. And so I just, I hope that this is really waking you up to, because everything that Mike is saying about being the undisputed leader in your industry, it's, it's down to creating content and it's down to putting yourself out there and getting in front of the right people. And, and really it's just connecting the dots. Like that's why I love marketing. Marketing is, it's strategic, but it's really just connecting the dots. It's like working backwards and asking yourself, like, who do I want to be in front of? What types of things would they be interested in? How can I create something that they would be in awe of and that they would be like, oh my God, I have to listen every single week. Um, How can I inspire these people? Even asking yourself, I remember when I first started this podcast, I wrote a list. I was like, "How? what are the ways in which I want to inspire people with this show? And even just getting clear on that, like, what are the outcomes that I want people to have from listening to this show? I think that's also super beneficial. Yeah. And if you're not sure what to talk about, ask your customers, what, what would you like me to talk about? Or ask your customers, what are some of the biggest struggles you're facing? And it doesn't necessarily have to do with actually what your business is. Mm-hmm. You, know, you could have a podcast that's just uh, attracting the right audience, but not necessarily about the topic. So let's say you're an ADHD specialist. You don't have to have a podcast on ADHD. Um, you could instead have a podcast on um, how to uh, how to work with uh, children who need a little extra help. You know what I mean? And it could cover a lot more than ADHD. And you could just interview parents all day long about the unique strategies and techniques that they can use to keep their child focused. And it could be at the very front of the show that it's sponsored by the ADHD specialist organization where we work with parents that have kids with special needs or whatever, you know, because our business is in the conference business, right? We sell conference tickets, but we're interviewing marketers about tips and techniques that have nothing to do with the conference at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, The hope is that some of those people will show up at the conference and our audience will want to meet them in person. So that's kind of our unique angle on my show. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. So at the end of every episode, I like to ask what I call the wrap up questions. Are you ready? Bring it on. Okay. So the first one is, what is one thing you do that has been a non-negotiable in the success of your business? I don't take meetings in the morning. Mm. So I like the idea that I can get up in the morning, go at my own pace, and generally do n- never take a meeting before 11 o'clock a.m. It's just my free time to do anything. And I t- typically do my hardest work in the morning because it's when I'm the most creative. Mm-hmm. So I just finally learned I was going to block and tackle that time and never take a meeting during that time. I love that so much. Okay. Share a mindset shift that has made the biggest difference in your life as an entrepreneur. I am going through one right now. I believe that I can do things better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And the mindset shift um, that I'm going through is there are others out there who can do it better than me. And it's okay to kind of let them do it. (laughs) And by the way, I think anybody who's an entrepreneur can relate to that one, right? Because like we're we're used to doing it all ourselves. And uh, yeah, you know, you're going to hit a ceiling eventually where you're going to burst, you're going to explode because that mindset is going to limit you um, from hiring the right people, scaling the business and taking it to where it needs to go. Fill in the blank. The world would be a better place if more people knew. About my podcast? (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I don't know. Oh my gosh. You know, um, uh, the only reason I say that is because I know I, I know that I have changed the world as a result of my podcast because I yeah. get stories from people telling me how it helped them get their job or helped them get their raise. Um, and, it. and it's the stupidest little things that can change the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> I love it because you're such a marketer. I just love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure I could come up with some more with, with a lot no, more thought I could no. come up with. I love yeah. that. That's a perfect okay. answer. Okay. okay. The book that changed my life was? Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. Well, actually, beyond the Bible, okay? I can't not say that one. Um, But Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud is a killer book that talks about how in all seasons of life and in business, we have to stop doing things. And he uses the metaphor of the rose bush. 
the rose bush, when growing in the wild, produces too many roses and is incapable of producing any beautiful roses until it's manicured. Literally, certain branches that are not producing are cut off the tree so that the lifeblood of the tree can go to those high producing branches of the rose bush. And the metaphor for business is that we have to stop doing things. Mm -hmm. So I've advocated an annual stopping list for myself and for my business, because I know that if I stop doing things, because I'm a limited creature with a limited amount of time, then I can have freedom to start something new. And this has been a very liberating book for me. It's called Necessary Endings. And man, I got to tell you, read it. It's a great book. That is the next book I'm going to read. Awesome. It sounds like it's exactly what I need to read right now. You awesome. really do. Yeah, yeah. And everybody does because like it, you know, the reality, the problem with entrepreneurship is that we just keep piling more stuff on Yeah. until we just can't handle it anymore. And we've lost ourselves in our business. And the idea that there has to be natural endings, necessary endings yeah. for us to become successful is actually something that makes intuitive sense, but it's, but it's not something that a lot of people have written about. Yeah. And it's hard because especially as entrepreneurs, like you're so married to your ideas and you, of course, we are all full of millions of great ideas, but that doesn't mean that we can execute well on all of them at the same time. Like we can probably only execute well on maybe one or two of them. And so even within our team, we've nicknamed this, um, kill your baby because it's like, you really want this idea to come to life and you really want to work on it. But at the same time, you understand that there are limited resources. And so we're just like, okay, you got to kill the baby, kill your baby. Just yes. <laughs> come up with a stop. I mean, at the very least, if you don't read the book, uh, this concept of a stopping list did not come from the book, but it's kind of similar, which mm -hmm. is come up with a list of things that you want to stop because you hate doing them or because they don't f bring you joy, mm -hmm. you know? And then once you stop doing stuff, just imagine, just calculate how much free time you would have if you stopped. And that maybe will allow you to be able to start the podcast or start the YouTube channel or start the whatever, mm -hmm. because you're going to stop doing things that do not work or do not bring you pleasure uh, or frankly, just are, are very important. And sometimes stopping means never means giving it to someone else. Yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. So. And lastly, I would yes. love for you to challenge our listeners to take some sort of action this week. So what would you like to challenge our listeners to do this week? I want you to reach out to Alex and I want you to tell her what you love about her podcast. And if you really, really love her show, I want you to tell her why you love her show and ask her, tell her, tell her why she shouldn't stop it permanently. Because what I want to let you know is that a lot of times when people stop, they never come back. So this is your chance to plead to Alex to not stop this show. <laughs> now, I want you to do it in any means necessary. If you want to take a little video and send it to her on Instagram, again, tell them your Instagram account. At Alex Beeden. Okay. Um, or if you want to, is that the best way to communicate with you? Is on Instagram? Yep. Or you can, yep. email, you can email me hello at alexbeeden.com. Yeah. So for those of you that are writers, write to her. And... Um, I want you to try to, uh, when, do you know when this podcast is going live? No. Okay. Well, I want you to try to write to her the same day that you're listening to this podcast, okay? And I want, as a result of this, her to get completely flooded with messages from people. And then I want her to come back on one of the next episodes and share some of the feedback. So my challenge to you is to flood Alex. And my challenge to you, Alex, is to be willing to share some of that feedback publicly. Are you willing to do that? I'm willing to do that. That is such a good idea, Michael. <laughs> I hey, love you it. came up with the idea. I mean, you <laughs> challenged me, so I'm just throwing it right back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. You were so helpful. I know that everyone who listened to this episode, hopefully has been inspired to go and create something of their own, whether it's a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever it may be. I know that this has been so inspiring to everyone listening. So I just want to say thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. And then before we, we end this, I'd love for you to share with everyone, where is the best place for people to find you? So the best place to find me, first of all, is going to be my podcast. So check it out if you have room on your listening dial, quote unquote. Check out the Social Media Marketing Podcast. And you can also reach me on Instagram. I'm at Stelzner, S-T-E-L-Z-N-E-R. 
Amazing. Thank you so much, Mike. My pleasure. If you've reached this far in the episode, that must mean that you loved what you just heard. And I want to say thank you for listening. I also want to prompt you to take a simple action step that would really make my day and really help support what I do here on the show. I would deeply appreciate it if you could take two minutes of your time to leave us a review. To do it, it's super simple. You're just going to open the podcast app on your phone, search for On Purpose with Alex Beaton, scroll down until you see the ratings and review section, and then tap the write a review button. Your reviews are what help support this show. So please, if you are enjoying this content, take the 60 seconds that it will take and go and write a review. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I want you to know how much I appreciate your attention. I want to thank you for listening and I can't wait for you to listen to the next episode. Talk-